April the 26th is the 62nd day of Russia's war against Ukraine. This day marks the 36th anniversary of the most terrible man-made catastrophe in human history, the explosion of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And it was exactly on this day that the Russian occupiers again called into question the nuclear security of Europe and the world. On the morning of April the 26th, enemy cruise missiles flew over the Zaporizhia NPP. Energo Atom Chief Petro Kotin reported. The flight of low-altitude missiles directly above the Zaporizhia NPP site poses a huge risk as seven nuclear facilities with a large amount of nuclear material are located here. After all, missiles can hit one or more nuclear facilities and this is a threat of the nuclear radiation catastrophe around the world. Later, it appeared that two missiles hit one of the enterprises in Zaporizhia. The missile exploded in the air. At least one person was killed. Zaporizhia NPP is the largest one in Eastern Europe and is still under the control of the occupiers. The Russian military has taken hostage the station's staff and keeps heavy artillery and ammunition on its territory, which is an act of nuclear terrorism. The occupiers also fired on Zaporizhia NPP more than once. Російські військові зробили в Чорнобильській зоні та на Запорізькій АЕС ніхто в світі не може почуватися безпечно, знаючи, яка кількість атомних об'єктів, ядерної зброї та відповідних технологій є у російської держави. Odessa city has not recovered yet from the terrible shelling which killed eight people as Russians launched missile strikes at the Odessa region again. One of the three missiles hit the bridge across the Dniester estuary. Fortunately, there were no casualties, said Maxim Marchenko, head of the Odessa Regional Military Administration. Своїми діями ворог намагається відрізати частину Одеської області та створити напруженість на фоні подій у Придністров'ї. This bridge is one of the main transport highways of the region, the road to Moldova. There, on April the 26th, Russia shelled the territory of the unrecognized Transnistrian Moldavian Republic. This is a series of provocations to involve Transnistria in the war against Ukraine. On the territory of the quasi-state, Russian troops have already been brought into full combat readiness according to the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces. According to the advisor of the head of the presidential office, Mikhailo Podolak, Moldova may become Putin's next target. Russia wants to destabilize the Transnistrian region and hence Moldova should wait for guests. Bad news, if Ukraine falls tomorrow, Russian troops will be at Kishinev's gate. Good news, Ukraine will definitely ensure strategic security of the region. But we need to work as a team. In another southern region of Ukraine, Kherson region, the occupiers are doing things that are impossible to imagine in the 21st century in Europe. According to the Commissioner for Human Rights of the Verkhovna Rada, Lyudmila Denisova, Russians are forcibly evicting people from their homes. In the temporarily occupied territory of the Kherson region in the urban-type settlement of Velika Oleksandrivka, the occupiers are forcing the local population to leave their homes by April the 28th. Forced evacuation will be applied to residents who do not comply with the criminal order of the Russists. Part of the Kherson region is currently under occupation. The Russian military is firing on civilians to intimidate locals and force them to accept Russian rule. Despite this, residents of the region do not stop going to peaceful protests against the pseudo-referendum for the creation of the so-called Kherson People's Republic. After all, Kherson region is Ukraine. The occupiers are forcing Ukrainian women to spy under the threat of shooting their children. Such atrocities of Russian soldiers in the partially occupied town of Rubizhna were reported by the head of the Luhansk Regional Administration, Serhii Haidai. Orki kradut dětej a potom zmušujúť žinok, jich materej, šob vony išli na pozícii ukrajinských výškových a pod egidou toho, že jim potřebná humanitárka брати якісь там гуманітарні набори або просто продукти і потім повертатись назад і розповідати, як облаштовані позиції українських захисників. 
Not a stone unturned left in the towns of Luhansk region. In particular, the occupiers fire at the civilian infrastructure of the town of Popasna several dozen times a day. They use everything to fire at Popasna. Artillery, aviation, even small arms battles are taking place now. People are trapped in the basements. On April the 26th, a house collapsed in the town of Popasna as a result of the shell hit. At least three people who were hiding from the occupiers' attacks in the basement died under the blockage. The occupiers set a trap for the civilians blocked in the territory of the Azovstal plant in Mariupol. Russians first announced the opening of the Green Corridor and then fired at it themselves said the deputy mayor of Mariupol, Petro Andrushenko. In fact, it looks like this. From an unarmored car, there is an announcement on speaker that offers to surrender and leave within 10-15 minutes. Then there is a short pause, and after that an artillery shelling is carried out in the residential area within the boundaries of the so-called exit from Azovstal. The enemy continues to shell the plant. People trapped at Azovstal are in critical condition. Many of them are wounded. Doctors perform surgeries day and night in conditions neither suitable for life nor the medical manipulation. But there they remove shrapnel, sew up wounds and even amputate limbs. At the same time, Russians continue to create the illusion of a peaceful life in Mariupol for Russian propaganda. To do this, under pressure from the occupiers, the men of captured Mariupol are forced to clean the debris, arrange mass graves in exchange for food and water to survive. In addition, the Russian military men have begun to mark the houses where they intend to settle. Enemy symbols appear on them, the letter Z. Other buildings are looted and then destroyed by the occupiers. The looters even reached the funds of Mariupol museums. The stolen stuff is planned to be taken to the illegally created Donetsk People's Republic. A story with a happy end. Two young residents of Mariupol, 10-year-old Ilya Matvienko and 12-year-old Kira Obedinska, have been rescued from captivity of the occupiers. The children lost their parents and were injured. Russian military took the children to the territory not controlled by Ukraine, but they were returned to their relatives, grandmother and grandfather. Currently, the children are recovering at the Ohmadid Hospital in Kyiv. On Ilya's birthday, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, visited the children. Kidnapping people, seizing documents and deporting Ukrainians to Russia is a regular practice of the Russian occupiers. More than 16,000 applications have already been registered in Ukraine to search for people who are considered missing. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an usual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal. <laughs>